Hi, everyone. Hi. Hi. So what's on your mind? My business leaders talk about being data-driven, but there's really no follow through. Do you have any tips for me on how I can really get their commitment? That's a great question. I see that quite a bit. And the biggest tip I would give you is that have the, your business leaders publicly commit to what they're going to do. Commit to their teams, commit to their management, maybe even through presentations or through some sort of um, talk with, the, with their executives or their uh, other people. And then you follow up as the data leader and you measure that. So communicate it, you measure it, and then you make sure that you have follow-on meetings to track how they're actually doing against those commitments. How do you overcome the project-based mindset of, are we done with this yet? We did it last year. So that project mentality is actually very common, and we talked about that as one of the big myths of data quality management, right? And, and I would say that's exactly why you need a business outcome-driven data strategy. And you want your data strategy to be documented because in that strategy, you'll begin to set that expectation. It's not just a project, that it's a program. And you'll also be able to articulate what does the end mean? What does it mean to build capabilities? And the data strategy will also be able to communicate what are the expectations in terms of the resources that you're going to need and the funding that you're going to need. And because it is a multi-year program, that you will need to invest in it. I've heard about your data quality tales of woe technique. Can you explain it and best how to use it? Sure. So the data quality stories of woe is a way to collect the perception of data quality in your organization. Um, that usually happens when you first start a position and you say, hey, I'm going to be the data leader. You get lots and lots of stories from, from all of your colleagues about all the data issues that they've been experiencing. And you want to collect those because when you collect them, then you start to understand where are the pain points of the company and then how do you remediate it. But just be careful that you don't let that uh, over override getting the facts because oftentimes what I find is that the perception around data quality doesn't always match the reality. So make sure that you also validate it with some data quality profiling and data quality investigation before you go off and try to remediate it. And actually managing perceptions is one of the areas that we discussed in the class and, and using a branding program and a communication plan to talk about all of those results uh, and your metrics so that you can start to turn that perception around. That's a gr another great idea for you to use. So like many of my colleagues, security and compliance keeps me up at night. How can you address these with a data strategy? You know, actually addressing all of the compliance requirements, security, legal, regulatory, and even data ethics we covered um, in the session. And in particular, what's different about a business outcome-driven data strategy that was that in the past you had a separate, you would have a separate security plan or compliance plan. But with the business data strategy, you're really including those data elements within the overall strategy that you want to achieve. So yes, you, it's a very serious topic and it's one that you should address as part of the overall strategy approach.